So I normally run my Starlink off the original router, which is 240 volt system. So I went on Amazon and I bought two Gen 2 12 volt conversion kits. So the idea is that I would also test how much power it used, not only on 12 volt, but 240 as well. So I plugged it into my power pack and then monitored how much power it used on both 12 volt and 240. And I was trying to make sure that the tests would be fair. So I was running speed tests. Uh, as well as uh, watching videos like 4K videos, just to see what the 12 volt and 240 volt uh, power use was you know, under both circumstances and also under booting of the dish as well. So as the dish initially sort of like boots up and orientates itself, how much power does it use on 12 volts, 240 volts that way? Uh, the reason why I'm doing this in the boot of my camper van right now is because that's where my electrical setup is. So I thought it'd be easy to do this. So I'm going to set it all up in the boot now, get all these little components and everything else set up. And then we're going to try it out to see what the power savings are, if any, on 12 volt, as opposed to using the original router on 240 volt. Plus, if I find any other sort of like idiosyncrasies, then I'm going to report them back, as well as how easy it is to set all this up. Um, and yeah, going forward, which will I be choosing? The odd thing, I must say, is they kind of look similar-ish. Different companies, different products. So yeah, just going to see how it goes. So you keep the same cable and the same dish, but you're changing the wireless router. And obviously this is also the power supply. So no longer needing the mains adapter or anything like that one. You don't need this. You're basically just going to plug one end into the Starlink, plug this end into the kit inside here. So this is the kit. That's the main conversion bit there. Uh, you have two ways to power it. So it uses these uh, mini Anderson connections that go in the side of it there. So from here, your power goes in. You've then got an output on this side, which goes to a router. And again, everything here that you see, they supply in this kit. So that powers the router. You've then got a cable to pass the internet connection to the router. You then got another connection here, which is the 48 volt output, power over the ethernet output that goes into this little adapter, which then you connect your Starlink cable to. And that goes in there. And then this goes up to the Starlink dish. So you got all that there or that box there and this cable. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do, now this is on the roof, I just want to plug it in and do a little quick test just to verify when it powers up and finds itself and all that kind of thing, how much power it uses. So I'm going to use my Dabson DBS 2300 um, and do a screen recording just so that I can show you that on screen now, what that uses. And then once I've done that, then we'll go over to the 12 volt conversion kit and see how that compares in its power usage. Okay, there we go. There's Dishy up on the roof again. So this is the mains plug and the Starlink Dishy cable all plugged in. I'll put that there. And it's onto the Dabson. So let's put the Dabson onto 240. And then we're going to see how many watts it then uses. So Starlink is now online and um, we do a little bit of a speed test. Twenty milliseconds latency is cracking. Two hundred meg download, it's pretty cool as well. Right, so let's do an actual speed test on the speed test app. So TMP is a good one in Manchester. So we're on uh, SpaceX Starlink, TMP Manchester. So let's do another speed test. So thirty seven ping. 125 download, it's pretty good. Uh, it did creep up as it was starting up, but that's settled down now. So as long as you're not using the snow melt feature, which obviously will take more power than that, 47 watts is how much you know it's taking out right now. So let's power it all down. Settings, Starlink, and stow Starlink. And then we can turn off the AC and then disconnect this and then connect up the new kit and see how that goes. All right, so I've gone through the wiring diagram now. So we've got the main unit. I've connected the main unit um, to 12 volts. So the light is on there. I've then got one of the DC outputs going to 
this router which they supplied. Um, I've obviously then got the 48 volt uh, power over ethernet adapter which is this which goes to this port here and then I've plugged in the other end of the Starlink adapter in the bottom there. Um, like I say that's where its power is going. Then we've got a LAN connection which I've plugged into the WAN port of this router. It's got all the ports listed on there and obviously then the 12 volt as well. So that is all powered on like they say it should all be connected. And then we've got another set of instructions which is one we're up once we're online I'm guessing uh, which then talks how to connect to the router. So we're going to do this on my phone, connect up to the router and I don't know how the Starlink app's going to work them so this is going to be a little bit of a test. So we're going to power it on and see what happens. So as per these instructions I found the Wi-Fi that it says there Wi-Fi XXX, this is Wi-Fi 7 blah blah blah, put in the password that it's saying at the top there, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, one mode auto acquisition is what it's saying, so yeah, we'll do next on that one. So this is where I want to know now is, does the Starlink app work? Starlink is online. So the dish is now set to the right angle if you like everything's working and set up as it should be so that's going to the dishy then that's the power over ethernet part this is the main center bit that is not getting hot or anything like that uh, it's now telling me that it can't connect to star gadgets 12 volt um, because it's not online <laughs> so i'm just going to tell it to keep trying wi-fi because this hopefully once it comes back online um, we'll just reconnect straight to Starlink. Um, and under there, we see it's shot up to 92, 21, 82 watts. Before, that was showing about 100 watts on um, 240. And this is the only thing plugged into 12 volt right now. So just that SIG lighter connection that they gave, going down, plugged into this kit, and powering everything up so that's the only thing connected right now on 12 volt just so i could run this test so you knew nothing else was interfering so it does seem to be like 21 22 watts is its minimum but it does want to jump up to be over 100 watts so it recognizes we're on starlink just going with the default server so let's do a test again obviously it's doing its own download of a update so that's going to affect these results a little bit and it's just powered on but i am intrigued to see if that power does increase yeah it does so the more you use starlink to send and receive big packets the more power it uses so that's a consideration as well to work out how much power starlink is going to actually need if you are perhaps gaming all the time or if you're doing voice over ip you know sort of uh, work or even video calls or anything like that the more you actually sort of like really cane the internet the more power it's going to use so that's dropping right down now and i'm going to guess the speed test is finished yeah speed test is finished um starlink still downloading its update 59 percent so what i've done now is i've set my ipad up and i'm going to basically do a speed test and then i'm going to watch a 4k video and on the left hand side you can see my phone which is also showing you the output um, so it's going to basically say how many watts Starlink is using on the 12 volt system whilst I'm watching a 4k video and doing a speed test well that was my plan anyway um, clearly it didn't work out because the video is stuttering now fortunately I've got a mobile router which has a WAN port so I thought let's bypass the little router they sent me and try it using my own so just re-clarification uh, we're using 12 volt it's coming to this little fuse box which is coming up and we're using the XTAR link uh, that is obviously its injector for the power over ethernet which is this this then goes out to dishy um, and then this is our lan connection so that's now plugged in there which means hopefully in a couple of seconds this should switch over once it sees the internet through this setup 
um, and yes we're using a 25 amp connection uh, both of these units do say that they can accept well, that one says between 9 and 36 volts um, that's its output 48 volts 3 amps that's to dishy um, and this one is obviously 48 volts to dishy doesn't say the amps um, but 10 volts to 30 volts input so both of them will work if you're using a 12 volt or a 24 volt system anyway so that's pretty good and yes you have seen right the power switch uh, fell apart had to be um, reassembled and taped back together um, so yeah a little bit of a negative point for the x tarlink system all right let's do some testing on this and see what it's like on power usage and um, also see what it's like on speed so i'm just putting the 12 volt system under load as i did the other day i'm um, just doing an actual upload of a video to the john and mandy channel and not so great results <laughs> Uh, it's using about 80 ish watts at the moment so at least it's not using 100 and something like it did last time but that is pathetic i might go flick over to the other 12 volt system um, and then um, yeah we can compare the two so we're currently on the second 12 volt system that i got and in comparison this is just a nice little compact box uh, everything is inside it so on one side you connect your power so incoming 12 volt power, I've just put a switch on there, a bit more of a robust switch I might add. Uh, and then on one corner, then you connect the dishy, and then on the top side there, you've got the LAN connection, uh, which is obviously now connected to my same router. And that's it. And there we go, we're back over to Starlink. So we are still downloading. So this is like night and day really, isn't it? Much faster download connection, uh, much faster ping as well. And yeah such a simple device with all the little bits you know sort of like all in one box um, it's obviously working much better too uh, the upload is much better as well so i thought i'd then go back to what we were doing before uh, which is watching some 4k content uh, with the power display on at the side so we can see how uh, it's going to cope with the 4k content whether it's going to be any stuttering like it was before and also what power it's using at the same time uh, just to verify what's going on in a real world kind of test conditions as well it seems to be quite stable at about 24 watts and i think i've just shot up to 71 watts 100 watts Still 100 watts, and then 33. 100 watts again. So clearly not all 12 volt conversions are the same quality. And crucially on this one, whilst you can see a few more power spikes, uh, for me, the fact that the video isn't stuttering at all means, just like the speed test proved before, that the connection that this Starlink system has to the Starlink network is of a higher quality than the other 12 volt system with all its different separate little devices that it needs. So yeah, bit of a no brainer folks. If you're gonna buy a 12 volt conversion kit, then yeah, check the video description down below um, and it'll be to the really good one, the small one. I know there are other conversion kits available online and i know loads of people that have basically converted everything into a 12 volt system put it in a box and glued it to the roof of the van so not only are you then possibly getting lower speeds because the equipment's getting a lower voltage or something like that but yeah the fact that the the dish being level is not going to be as fast is another thing as well in fact there's a little test that i might want to do actually so right now my dish is up there and it is sitting at the sort of optimum sort of angle um, if you like for getting the speeds that it's reporting there is a setting in the app i have noticed now so under the starlink app under starlink you've got tilt and if you want you can put it as flat now it's going to warn you there about if you do it flat it's best if you use it often powered on while you're in motion i'm going to put save the dish has then instantly gone into the flat mode let's do um, a sort of real life speed test now using the speed test app so we're topping out maybe sort of 24 25 oh it's going up a bit more 28 and that's the bit with me um as long as it's over 10 that's fine for me on the upload that's cool and that's using u fiber london 
let's go and put the dish back into uh, tilt mode, automatic mode. I'm going to hit that and we'll do this at the same time. So see if that moves. So there you go. So the route has found its optimal angle now. So we're going to uh, go back into the speed test, do a new test and see if that got any better. So 25 was the speed test before. Okay then, Let's see if that does pick up at all. Setting the dish to flat mode, essentially flat mounting it on the roof. Uh, so I could dismantle that and do a flat mount conversion, just switch it on when I use it. And well, for me personally, there was hardly any difference from having it um, sort of like on the tilt mode or on the flat mode. It was pretty much the same speed up and down, but flat mount, that might just be now possible now they've upgraded all those satellites in space, uh, which does make it faster, does make it easier to use. And obviously as it's shown right now, does make flat mounting uh, that much more of a possibility as well. It looks ugly right now, but essentially that is the setup. So this is the little box that's making Starlink work on 12 volts. Um, and that's my LAN connection, which goes into my router, which is actually my mobile router. So what it allows me to do is use one router uh, and it uses my EE SIM card, it's my mobile phone SIM card. Um, and then when Starlink is switched on and booted up, this is configured to use Starlink. So I could actually even bond it and use both the Starlink and the EE SIM card to get a much faster connection. Um, and I will obviously make this much neater. So there we go, two different ways of powering Starlink with both of them getting pretty good results on connectivity as well. Uh, both actually getting around about the same power usage as well, uh, which fundamentally really comes down to one thing then is, yes, this is providing the exact power Starlink needs and it's giving a really good data connection as well. So the internet speed's really good. However, if you were to go to the 12 volt system I've got here, um, the internet connection is still really, really good, but you are not saving that much power. Um, I reckon you're probably saving about five to 10% power. So is it worth it? Well, I think for the convenience of just being able to go flick a switch on there, no inverter needed, um, especially the way I've got it wired up into this router, uh, yes, because this basically replaces that, so smaller, um, and this doesn't need an inverter whereas um, that does. So I'm going to get the same internet connection speed, uh, but just with a bit more sort of, um, yeah, ease of use, if you like, especially because everything in my van is powered from 12 volt anyway. So is it worth it? Yes. Um, does it lead me to the next subject matter, which will be in the next video of um, maybe if I permanently mounted my Starlink to the roof, all I would need to do then is flick that and then everything's done. That would make it really easy, right? So watch the next video, folks, where I strip down my Starlink dish uh, to make it as small as I can to fit onto the roof of my van. And I'm also probably going to, uh, yeah, cable it up permanently and put glands through the roof and all that kind of stuff. So if you're interested in converting a Gen 2 Starlink dish into flat mount sort of thing, then uh, yeah, catch the next video for more information on that. All right, thanks for watching, folks. Take care, and I'll catch you on the next video. See you later. Bye.